One Fun Day with Lewis Carroll, A Celebration of Wordplay and a Girl Named Alice, by Catherine Kroll and Julia Sandrera. Lewis Carroll was an expert at fun. A day with Lewis was always fabulous and joyous, as he would say, frabjous. Young Lewis could make anyone grin from ear to ear, like a Cheshire cat. His ten brothers and sisters adored him. He coaxed them into games of cards, chess, and croquet. He led them galumphing across the leafy wonderland of the English countryside. They found rabbit holes to peer down, toads and caterpillars to befriend, flowers to talk to, trees to climb. Their burbles of delight would brighten the toji wood around them. Best of all, Lewis made up stories and drew pictures. His drawings weren't as splendid as his tales, but his siblings didn't care. His playfulness with words sent them all into a complete jabberwocky. Lewis started writing down his stories and poems. He loved to find new ways to make words play together on a page. Wow, wow, wow! Even after he grew into a prim and proper Victorian gentleman, Lewis still loved fun. He didn't want any child feeling mimsy in his company. To amuse the children of his friends, he kept closets full of mechanical toys and dolls. He took the children on trips to the circus, or the theater, or a Wild West show. He played games, inventing new rules for extra fun, and he encouraged pranks, such as climbing up a clock tower to strike the enormous bell at the wrong time of day. His young friends never knew what a day with Lewis would hold. Sometimes he'd propose six impossible things before breakfast. Should they draw ridiculous things, like much of muchness? Should they try to soothe the jub-jub bird? Should they argue with the mysterious twins Tweedledum and Tweedledee? Should they beware the dreaded boojum? Should they go hunt for the snark? Should they play with a vorpal blade until it goes snickersnack? Lewis ran races and gave unbirthday presents. He would even make schoolwork fun. Who knew that one could study reeling and writhing, that arithmetic included uglification? As a fun day turned brilling, Lewis hosted picnics under the the tum-tum tree with tea and cold chicken. He always brought a basket full of yummy cakes, taking care to to keep them away from the toves. Anyone who had to miss a fun day with Lewis Carroll would be frumious. Then came one fine, famous Friday afternoon in July, when Lewis began to spin a story like no other. Rowing a boat with a friend and the three daughters of another friend, he began telling a tale about a girl named Alice. It was no coincidence that one of the girls was also named Alice. Perhaps she was sleepy from the sounds of the oars jipping or the water dripping. Perhaps she was feeling uffish. But right now she cheered up. A girl with her name had just tumbled down a rabbit hole. Lewis later admitted he had no idea what would happen next, but on the spot continued to row. He kept playing with his words and his story. Alice follows a white rabbit. She finds a bottle that says, drink me, and a cake that says, eat me. She keeps growing larger and smaller, sometimes nine feet high, sometimes three inches tall. In this crazy wonderland, all the animals talk, even the caterpillar, and so do the flowers and plants. We're all mad here. Oh, this was getting curiouser and curiouser. A pack of cards plays croquet using live hedgehogs and flamingos. Sea creatures dance the lobster quadrille, while Alice interprets a ma- interrupts a mad tea party. Everyone chants silly poems and songs when a mock turtle croons, Beautiful, beautiful soup, over and over. Lewis's friends in the boat were glued to their seats, not daring to guile or gimble. Not even a bandersnatch could have distracted them. Lewis added details that kept the real Alice and her sisters bimish, and also peppered the tale with things that would tickle grown-ups. He threw in breathless escapes, witty arguments about nothing, and one slithy surprise after another. 
His brave hero, Alice, copes with it all until the very last minute. Then the pack of cards comes whiffling down upon her, awakening from her most curious dream. His friends, rocking in the boat, were wonderstruck. Was there a moral to Lewis's story? No, it was just for fun. Kalu Kale! Write it down, said the real Alice. She was ten, and like the Queen of Hearts, a bit bossy. So he did. Two years after that famous boat ride, Lewis presented the real Alice with a handwritten copy of what became Alice's Adventures in Wonderland with its own illustrations. When he later published the story as a book with much better pictures by someone else, readers all over the world erupted in chortles in no time. Lewis was rich, famous, and busy writing his second book about Alice, this time sending her through the looking glass. Lewis Carroll, the man who never forgot how to play, had turned a day of fun into stories that were frabjous, fabulous and joyous, or as he would say, frabjous.